Okay, today is about helping out those of you who have shoulder blade pain or what we call medial scapular pain. So what I mean by that is pain that's not on the shoulder blade, not on the spine, but halfway in between. So it's sort of that point where you go, oh, I can feel like soreness or a knot in there, or maybe you've got an ache that is sitting in between the shoulder and the spine right there. Medial meaning medially from the scapula, so towards the midline. That sort of pain is usually from a neck issue. Now, when we treat those sort of people in the clinic, they may have a neck problem here that's causing that or referring pain down into that medial scapula. And sometimes it just goes away with neck treatment and a few exercises. But if it's been there for long enough, then what tends to happen is this part gets sore, gets weak, and turns into its own little global problem of itself. That needs exercise because if that gets really weak, and it gets sore from being weak, it sort of gets worse and worse and worse. We're gonna give you some exercises to try and bring that back and get that pain or get rid of that pain by getting your tone and posture back on those muscles and improving it that way. So I've got three things to do for your shoulder blade, if you like, and a couple of things for your neck to tidy that up. So first one I'm gonna show you is a row, because we're gonna target this tissue directly. We don't wanna load it too much, like the biggest sort of mistake that people make is they try and do a row and really strengthen it up. Now, if that tissue is sore and weak, if you overload it, it's gonna flare it up after the gym again. So you actually have to go quite light with this, hence the light TheraBand. Wrap that around a pole. Now, you can either go one if you want to do this really light, or you go two if you want a little bit heavier. I'll show you with one today to show you that movement. Now, with this movement, what I'm aiming for is a shoulder blade row, not an arm row. So this part here is just the shoulder blade. Now the trick is for you guys, is to make sure your upper trap doesn't do all the work. Okay, so when you row backwards, you've got to try and aim for the mid part and the rhomboid and a little bit of lower trap. If you use too much rhomboid, your shoulder blade's gonna go up. Okay, so you'll know we're using too much, not enough sort of lower as that shoulder blade comes up. We're trying to aim for the shoulder blade to go horizontally backwards. Okay, so it can't go up, right? You've got to try and pull that shoulder blade just the shoulder blade back. Okay, so I'm retracting here. If you can see me here, if I put my thumb here, I'm going to bring the shoulder blade that's in a protracted position, retract it back until it hits my thumb. Okay, now the first thing your brain is going to want to do is bend your arm. So as soon as you pull, you'll want to go and try and help out with the arm. Now that's a primal movement, a pull movement, so that your brain's geared up to every time you pull your shoulder blade back, you bend your arm. You've got to try and isolate that so you're not using your lat to try and do all the work. You're trying to isolate so this part's doing the work. And you'll find if you get some postural tone and some blood flow through the muscle tissue that is sore, and not overload and pull on it, you'll actually reduce the pain and knock out some of that pain. Sometimes the blood flow will increase a little bit, that will knock out some of the pain. If the fact, simply fact that you're increasing the tone and you're supporting that tissue, takes the pressure off the neck. You may even find that actually turning on these muscles here that have been sort of turned off, if you like, through pain inhibition, if you get them fired up and toned up, you actually feel light on the shoulder, it takes the pressure off the neck, Usually the next cause, right? So you may find that these exercises, oh, that feels better here, is just because half the reason is it's alleviating the pressure on the neck. So that row is your first go-to. And you've just got to make sure it's really subtle, really boring, and just working on that movement. The reason why you've got the band to do it is you need a bit of pressure biofeedback, but you also need a bit of tension there to try and increase the tone here, okay? Now don't try too hard with that one. It's a subtle movement. You're aiming for pain relief. You're not aiming to strengthen it. So keep that load light. And you can strengthen it later in the gym once that pain is gone, but aim to think the aim of the game is pain relief for that muscle tissue. So make that band appropriate. Second thing I want you to do it's what we call a skydive. So same sort of muscle thing, but you're, this one is sort of resistance on, off, on, off. The next one is isometric loading. So go on the floor. I'll show you with my right one because it's closer to you. With this one, what you're aiming to do is similar movements. You aim for retraction, but a little bit more depression than retraction. Okay, so I'm going to aim for my shoulder blade. If it's forward and sort of down, down to the floor, if you like, 
I'm going to try and aim for it to come up off the floor. So I retract my shoulder blade as far as I can go. I've just got to make sure that I'm not going to let my, out my shoulder go towards my ear. I've got to think, when I raise my arm here, I want to almost reach down. When I raise my arm, I'm reaching for my foot, which will keep it down, as in down that way, not up. So when I raise my shoulder up, I don't want to do this, okay? You've got to think, pull it up, raise your hand, reach down to your foot. Now what you can do at that point there, because you're going to hold this for 10 to 15 seconds, is rotate your thumb outwards like that. So I'm externally rotating the shoulder, which will kick in a little bit of external rotation in the shoulder, which will help out. Just make sure when you do that, you don't lose sight of the fact that you're trying to pull down and you're trying to not let it come up, all right? So pulling down, external rotate. Now that is a 10 to 15 second hold. And then you go down, let it relax. Now I would, the wait time would be about half of that, okay? You probably don't need to go to 10 seconds, maybe five, seven seconds of that wait time. Let it recoup, go again, pull it up, raise it, rotate it, hold it. You'll feel that in your tricep as well. Now if you want to be a little bit pedantic, you can work on a little bit of core stability work or posture work where you actually keep your neutral spine. This hand you can actually push down into the ground to stabilize you a bit more, so you can just focus on that one shoulder blade. The other little trick I get people to do is if you're, if you're struggling with like, oh, where do I put my shoulder, I'm not too sure, because you might find maybe you're not that coordinated in the shoulder blade or you've got a bit of pain, you've got a bit of inhibition, you can't really feel what's going on. Think about aiming for your shoulder blade to move in a direction of your opposite back corner pocket. So if I had a pair of jeans on, my opposite back corner pocket's over here. So I'm not going from right shoulder sort of to left buttock. If you like, that's the direction I'm going. Okay, so I'm going across and down, and then trying to hold it there, 10 or 15 seconds. Now that one, again, super boring, but great for pain relief, okay? Great for switching that on. The isometric work you get in that muscle is really, really good for postural load, so great for you in your computer. And then that will lead you into the pressing stuff. So there's two sort of retraction type pulling ones, if you like, because that's the muscle tissue trying to directly affect where the pain's going, okay? The second thing I want you to work on is using other muscles around the shoulder to support that area. Because if your shoulder blade is getting pain there, it's usually gonna slump down, the whole thing possibly turns off a little bit. So you need to work on some press work, some serratus work to bring it back into that flat position to hold it there. So you don't want to just rely on muscles here jacked up to hold you back like that, they're going to fatigue. You need other muscles underneath the shoulder blade to keep it flat as well. So I would go for a press, usually just go for a one arm wall press because we're going for light stuff, not too much load, we don't want to crank up too much straighter strength, we just want activation, right? So this position here, you're going to try and aim for that hand to be below the shoulder. Okay, so if you look at that shoulder, just a little bit below. Now, just with people with wrist tightness and that sort of thing, a bit of neural tightness, this might be a little bit hard, but see how you go with this. For this one, again, your primal brain will say, when I go into the wall, I want to bend my arm. All right, so you've got to try and think, okay, I can't bend my arm. I've got to use my tricep here to keep my elbow straight. Body stays square to the wall. When you go towards the wall, you've got to make sure that shoulder blade directly goes backwards, okay? So it's an eccentric movement into the wall and then a concentric push away from the wall. And that's going to fire your serratus under here. It's going to help you keep that shoulder blade sitting there nicely toned, sitting up into this position, not sort of dropping down into that position. So for this movement, when you look, preferably if you look in a mirror, when you look in the mirror, Watch your shoulder blade is not coming up here. A lot of people tend to go on the wall when they tend to do this. When it goes backwards, it just rises straight up. We don't want that. We don't want that upper trap bloating up. It's already got pain going down to the end of the mid trap. You don't want that. So you've got to try and just almost keep it down and then go forward into the wall, keeping that elbow straight and then push away. The other thing I don't want people doing is when they go into the wall, rotating in. So just try and keep your body square here. So when you go to the wall, that is basically parallel with the wall, and you're pushing just in and out like that. Okay, nothing too heavy. Then trying to aim for the same sort of thing, reps and sets, maybe about three or four sets, maybe about eight to 10 reps, that sort of thing, just keep it simple. Don't have to worry too much about your count. Okay, just enough to make it feel like when you, switch, when you stop that, 
it's feeling lighter, there's less sort of aching going on because things are switching on, you get some blood flow through there. So that one's just about as crucial as the other ones. You can't just remember, you can't just work on pulling stuff to switch up the, try and get rid of muscle pain, you need other muscles to support it. Now, they are sort of three shoulder weight ones I would go for to try and drop the pain down. The other thing number two I want to address is the neck because if you've got pain that's coming down into that part there, the muscles in the back of your neck are going to be a little bit trashed as well, and perhaps they're a bit posturally weak anyway, and maybe that's the cause of what's going on in the first place. So what I would get is something like this ball here. Now, this is a Pilates ball, but we use these because they're nice and bouncy and easy to use. But when you're at home, if you don't have one of these, maybe a kid's bouncy ball or even just a pillow, like a big soft pillow, and you might have to fold it up, that sort of thing, to push into so you can get some pressure to create the resistance. Now the way you use this, is you go up against the wall like this, and I'd go maybe half a foot away from the wall, so not directly on the wall, you wanna be about half a foot away from the wall, because this ball is gonna make up that other half foot, okay? You're gonna try and aim to have a perfect, if you like, straight up posture, okay? With this behind your skull, okay? So the back of your skull, and what I want you to do is you're gonna have that upright posture but make sure that ball is not pushing you forward. You're gonna push back into the ball. So you're at that point where you're absolutely upright. Now I'm trying to push down through my heels, my quads are on, I'm trying to keep my TA on here, my transverse, I'm with the glutes on, shoulders are down, relaxed. Okay, they're not forward, they're down, relaxed. And I'm just pushing back and they're pretty hard, like a good 50% of pressure of my maximum, I'm pushing in there. Now, it's not so much I can't talk, I'll notice that these muscles are doing a little bit of action, but it's mostly the extensors back here. So exactly where the pain that was going, would be going down from my neck through to my shoulder blade, that's the muscle system I'm working. But I'm using it in conjunction with my whole posterior chain and my abdominals. Okay, so I'm thinking connect here, connect the posterior chain, switch all that on, and I'm doing a whole long isometric load for about half a minute. You can even go up to a minute with this sort of stuff, but just be careful when you come off, you're not sort of watch the dizziness side of things. That'll really turn that on. You can only do though this enough to get rid of pain. Remember, pain relief is the go. Don't do so much that it starts generating pain. You're putting too much load through the neck that is actually flaring things up. This is gonna be taking pain away. So just make sure you're not trying to get in there and try and think, oh, I've got to strengthen it. You've actually got to know You've got to switch off the pain, so you've got to turn muscle on. So this pressure, I'm, I did 50%, you might find 20% is enough. So just work out how much pushback you need. But when you are looking at this, if you're looking from the side, say you might need to get someone who's help you with this, you want to be straight up and down with this, okay? I don't want you sort of here and pushed forward. I don't want you leaning on the ball like this sort of thing. You've got to be, okay, Think of where that ball is, okay? So the best way you can probably do is like, okay, if that was the ball, that's how far away I'd need to be, okay? So you take that away, okay, put my foot there, and then the ball, and then put the pressure on the ball. Try and keep that whole body absolutely vertical, and there's your pain relief, if you like, for your neck. Try to get that isometric work in there. Now, if that's too much load for you, say you're quite acute with this sort of thing, you didn't mind the shoulder blades up, but that's too much, you can do an alternative, which is just working against gravity. So that's where you go back into your lying position. And this one, what you can do is think, imagine the wall was behind me from this position here. First thing I want to do is switch on a bit of posterior chain, bit of glutes here. The hands this time, what you can do is actually pull your shoulder blades down and push through your hands. So I'm actually really stabilizing my shoulders. From there, what I want to do is gently raise my head off to that position there. So think of like, if I was pushing it back against the ball, I'm still using my extensors, but I'm only working against gravity. But at least I've got the rest of my body holding me there as well. I'm sort of teaching a pattern movement. I'm trying to teach, can I hold my neck in that position with these muscles, but the whole posture train through my spine, my glutes are working as well. And I'm putting a bit of pressure through my hands to give me a st stability there. That movement there may be enough to give you that relief through the neck. So. There's my ones for medial scapular pain. See how they go for you. See you next time.